welcome back. As promised, now we are going to talk about graphs a little bit. The first thing that I would like to say about graphs is that graphs are abstract entities. They are composite structures made up of nodes and vertices and so on. And we are moving towards this idea of uh, representing abstract structures or abstract entities. It is made up of nodes and edges as we said that typically one were to draw a graph one would draw it something like this where every of the circles is a node and every line is an edge between two nodes. People talk of hyper graphs where there are hyper edges which can connect more than two nodes. But let us keep it simple here. Nodes exist in the domain and they belong to a category called node. So, we can make a statement like x is a node essentially. We will model edges as binary relations between nodes essentially. So, we can say that there is an edge between let us say if this is node x and this is node y, then this there is an edge between that. It is a binary relation between these nodes x and y. Of course, very often when we talk about uh, um, graph algorithms, we give names to edges as well. So, we can say that E is an edge essentially. So, for every edge in the graph do something, we can do talk about things like that. So, again we are creating an abstract entity called an edge, uh, which we think of as existing in the domain essentially. But here we are modeling edge as a binary relation. So, just like parent child or uh, let us say uncle nephew if you want to define it as a new relation there is an individual, another individual and an edge between them. So, what exists in the domain are nodes and graphs are made up of nodes essentially. A graph is an abstract entity that is made up of a set of vertices or nodes and a set of edges E. So, V and E or sometimes we use N and E, but basically a set of vertices or a set of nodes and a set of edges essentially. Conceptually that is what is a graph and we can say that G is a graph. Now, G would be an abstract entity essentially. It is like a collection of all those nodes and all the connections between those nodes. A node of course is defined in a domain, so we can say n is a node. We can also say that n is a node in the graph G by saying n is a node, G is a graph and n belongs to G. Actually. So, belongs to is a binary relation between a node and a set, an element and a set. We can say that edge n 1 n 2 is true whenever the pair n 1 n 2 forms an edge. That is how we define the interpretation of binary relations that there must be a relation in the domain made up of such tuples here or pairs in this case. And that what we mean by an edge is that n 1 is directly connected to n n 2. We would make an observation here that an edge occurs only between two nodes essentially. Just like we said that two people can be married only if they are human, here we are saying an edge can occur only between two things which are called nodes, which, are, which belong to the category nodes. And we can talk about an edge being part of a graph then we would mean that the pair n 1 n 2 belongs to the graph G, but we here are not modeling them as elements in that this thing, we are modeling them as relations between this thing. It would be a slightly more complex exercise to add those set of edges to the domain and then connect them to the nodes and you could do that. 
but we do not often need that essentially. Now, if the edge relation is symmetric, then we say that the graph is undirected, which means you can go from n 1 to n 2 and you can also go from n 2 to n 1, otherwise it is directed basically. So, when we say edge n 1 n 2, we have a sense of direction that we are going from n 1 to n 2. If you allow, you want to allow it to be in both directions, you can say that the edge relation is symmetric in your graph. Otherwise, if only some edges are symmetric, then you have to explicitly state both n 1, n 2 and n 2, n 1. You cannot have a generic relation that all edges are symmetric. So, when we talk about paths, when we talk about graphs, we often talk about paths essentially. So, let us define a path here. There is a path from a node n to a node m. If there is a sequence of edges forming a chain starting at an n and going up to m essentially. So, you may have n and h to let us say p and h to q and h to r and then an h to m. If you have a sequence of such edges or a sequence of such nodes which are linked by edges, then we say that there is a path from n to m. We can define this predicate called path. This predicate says that there is a path from node n to node m. And we say that for every n and m, saying that there is a path from node n to node m is equivalent to saying that either there is an edge from node n to m or there exists some node p such that there is an edge from n to p and there is a path from p to m. So, again we have a recursive definition that you have a path from n to p, n to m. If there is some node for, for which there is an edge from n to p for example, as shown here and there is a path from p to m. The fact that n and m have to be nodes is implicit because we have already stated that edges can only be between nodes. Another small point to note here is that nothing stops n from being the same as m. Uh, so, when you talk about graph algorithms, we may or may not want to add self edges or reflexive edges between nodes and if, the, if we have reflexive edges, then we can say that there is a path from node n to itself. If that reflexive edge is not there, then there is no path. But the, in the definition that we have, we have not said anything about whether reflexive edges are reflexive or not. If, if we want to add reflexive edges, either we will add to have a general statement that for all n there is an edge from n to n or if there are some edges, some nodes which have reflexive edges, we will have to add them explicitly. But nothing stops us from adding reflexive edges. Now, you would have observed that this definition of path is almost the same as the definition of an ancestor that we had defined here. So, if you look at these two definitions component by component, you will see that they are identical except for name changes and we have already said that names are only in our heads, not in the uh, program itself or not even not in the knowledge base itself. We can interpret the meaning of path to be anything. I could say that path means ancestor and ancestor means path. It really depends upon what you want to define. So, in both cases we are talking about some two things being connected. We have already drawn the ancestor thing almost as a graph earlier. Then we are saying that uh, from that x 
it is x here and m here there is an immediate connection so there is an edge or parent is an edge you can think of our graph as made up of only of parent edges then it's a graph essentially which is talking about uh, the family relationship and then both have the same existential clause and both have those two components one of them which is a recursive part and one of them is the initial part of that essentially so obviously if we were to draw a family tree we could talk about paths so we, we are thinking of them as graphs the only difference is that parent is not a symmetric relation uh, whereas we can define the edge to be a symmetric relation if the edge was not a symmetric relation which means that the graph was a directed graph then the two would simply become isomorphic essentially so when we say a is a parent of b then we could say then there's an edge from a to b essentially then there would be no difference between the two domains since we have introduced this graph as a abstract entity we can talk about properties of a graph we can say that the graph is connected and what we mean by that is as you can see at the bottom of the slide that for all nodes in the graph for all nodes n and m you choose any pair of nodes if n is a node in the graph and if m is a node in the graph then there must be a path from n to m so a graph is said to be connected if you can go from any node in the graph to any other node in the graph so we can talk about properties of abstract entities like graphs essentially we are talking about abstract entities and as i said we are moving towards this process of creating abstract entities uh we'll look at this problem uh this relation of being is taller than or is heavier than but let's do that in the next session